Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video and if you are new here my name is Hannah, I am an astrologer and I make videos all about astrology. Okay so in today's video we're going to be discussing the five things that you need to know about this new moon in the sign of Libra taking place on the 25th of September 2022 so stay tuned. But before we do dive into today's video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the bell. And if you are interested in a personal reading for myself, you can visit my website, hannaselsewhere.com. There you can also find my practical astrology ebooks and merch. All the links will be in the description box below. All right, so I do find I do hope that you find this video to be helpful today. Let's do this. So the first thing you need to know about this new moon in Libra is that it will conjunct the sun in Libra at two degrees. And the number two in numerology represents things like support, love, harmony, intuition, understanding, mediating, counselling, grace, unity, peacemaking and this is quite fitting because Libra is the sign associated with things like peacemaking and harmony but it's also a sign of balance and justice so when things are leaning too far one way, Libra seeks to restore the balance by leaning in the opposite direction. This is what also makes Libras such reasonable, rational, intelligent and adjustable people. And they do so in such a gracious and well-mannered way. Libras are the type of people you go to when you're seeking some type of counsel. And if you go to them with a problem, they'll typically act as a mediator. They can see things from your side and also from the other person's side. They can also see how you might be unbalanced and how the other person is unbalanced. And so they will give you the best advice on how to make things not only harmonious within your relationship, but also within yourself. Indeed, there is a deep social understanding when it comes to this sign and they are great in social situations. They know how to work a room even though they can feel insecure and uncomfortable at times and also provided they are surrounded by admirers and by people they like. Not to mention they will be tactful and diplomatic so you typically won't feel offended by their words or their actions. In fact people usually like to have them around because not only are they great at making others feel comfortable and at ease, but they also know how to carry a great conversation. And throughout that conversation, they usually want to have a healthy give and take between you and them, meaning that they won't make the discussion all about them. And they'll also pick up on when you make the discussion all about you. On the other hand, of course, context is important and they know how to read the room. So if you need more time to talk or if you're going through a difficult time yourself, a difficult situation, they'll be there to listen and support. But if they need more time to communicate and you make everything about yourself, they'll most likely also notice. Therefore, during this new moon, in Libra, consider the give and take, right? The back and forth between you and others. And at the same time, consider how balanced you are within yourself. Maybe you're having more upsetting days than good days, for example, or maybe you're much more social than usual and you haven't had a moment to yourself in so long. Yeah, reflect on your inner harmony 
Perhaps during this new moon, you set new intentions to do with things like balance, relationships, fairness. Though also remember, Mercury has been retrograde in Libra from the 9th of September until the 23rd of September. And so you might reflect on themes that came up during that time, such as important discussions with friends, partners, relatives, business um, associates, or even reflecting on how you weigh things out and explore options that are available to you, or even looking at themes to do with your appearance or beauty, taste, style, all of these Libra types of things. Then again, perhaps you set new intentions to do with contracts or agreements or unfinished projects. So let's get into these signs. Let's say this new moon is taking place in your seventh house. So looking at you, Aries, Sun, Moon and Risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair within your relationships and partnerships, or you set new intentions to do with harmony within these areas. Maybe you consider what came up during the Mercury retrograde and you want to settle a few things or you want to gain clarity. You might seek some feedback from your partner or from a close friend, for example. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your third house, so looking at you Leo, Sun, Moon and Risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair within your local area relationships and just looking at your general interactions with others, or you set new intentions to do with harmony within these areas. Maybe you consider what came up during the Mercury retrograde and you want to gain clarity. But you also reflect on these things, okay, very deeply. You might seek feedback from a neighbour or from a sibling, for example. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your 11th house. So looking at you Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair within your friendship circles and your communities, or you set new intentions to do with harmony within these areas. Again, maybe you consider what came up during the Mercury retrograde and you basically just want to clear the air. But at the same time, there are still a few things to consider. You might seek feedback then from a team or from an organization that you're a part of, for instance. The second thing you need to know about this new moon is that the sun and moon in Libra will conjunct Mercury retrograde in Virgo. So coming from the Mercury retrograde in Libra, we move to Virgo and Virgo is sort of communicating this message of what is there to revisit and rethink when it comes to organization and scheduling. Things to do with systems you have set up. Perhaps there are a few things to adjust there. You might review your dedication, your efficiency, or maybe you want to switch up your routines or you want to make small changes to your work and services or even looking at small changes to your health and your well-being. Something old might be looked at or you set new intentions to do with your daily lifestyle. Keeping in mind here, Venus is the ruler of Libra and it's in Virgo conjunct Mercury retrograde in Virgo as well. And so as we are setting new intentions during this new moon, we also take a moment to reflect on how tidy or well kept we are. Nothing messy, nothing too weird, nothing scary or, or tacky. Actually, let's just keep things simple, simple. Let's purify and create some type of order using our minds. And also let's use some discernment. So on that note, let's say this new moon is taking place in your fourth house. So looking at you Cancer, Sun, Moon and Risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious within the home, especially looking at your family relationships. But there is also a need to think over how well organized and put together everything is. Miscommunication regarding order, cleanliness and hygiene is likely, but maybe you can also use um, discernment to settle any issues or problems that come up. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your 12th house, so looking at you Scorpio, Sun, Moon and Risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious 
when it comes to your alone time or your spiritual life, especially looking at the relationship you have with God or a higher power, or looking at how you feel when you're on your own. So looking at enjoying your own company. But there is also a need to think over how healthy you are, especially mentally, miscommunication regarding um, the order of future plans is likely, but maybe you can also use good judgment to come up with some solutions. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your eighth house, so looking at you Pisces, sun, moon and risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious when it comes to intimacy and vulnerability, especially looking at the relationship you have with super close friends or intimate partners. But there's also a need to think over how you connect with others. So looking at how equal things are, whilst of course being practical. Miscommunication regarding small changes in the bedroom is likely, or even miscommunication when it comes to vulnerability is likely. But maybe you can use discernment as a way to just clear the air. The third thing you need to know about this new moon in Libra is the sun and moon in Libra will also conjunct Venus in Libra. And of course, Mercury retrograde will conjunct Venus. Um, and like I said, Venus rules Libra. And so we really are addressing the cleanliness of our relationships, our finances, even looking at self-love. We want to think about these things practically and honestly. Now, we might also be fussy, we might feel irritated, we might also nag others, which I could relate to as I was typing up this script. Though on that note, um, Mars will also square Mercury retrograde and Venus in Virgo. So there can be this part of us that wants to argue or cause conflict. Arguments might occur due to how nagging, correcting or reminding we can be. Virgos do have the tendency of going on and on and on at others. They can also stress about little things and worry about how everything in their life is falling apart. After all, they are the people who keep things together so, so well, even if they don't realize it. But with Mars making a square to Venus and Mercury, perhaps the worrying intensifies, okay? Or we are much more vocal about how stressed we feel. Still, with Venus being in Virgo, there is a big part of us that wants to clean things up and have things the way we want them, even if we annoy others in the process. <laughs> so let's say this new moon is taking place in your sixth house. So looking at you Taurus, sun, moon and risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious within your working life, especially looking at your co-worker relationships, but you might also want to clean things up um, when it comes to things like romance, creativity, or even looking at um, your spare time activities. You want to make sure you have all your ducks in a row and that your finances, they're in order as well. That way you can afford the things you enjoy, the things that you are interested in. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your second house, so looking at you Virgo sun, moon and risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious when it comes to the things you value, desire and appreciate, especially looking at the relationship you have with money, but you might also want to clean things up when it comes to your identity and how you perceive the world. You want to make sure things are in good order and that your finances are organized as well. That way, that way you can afford the type of lifestyle you want to live. The fourth thing you need to know about this new moon is that the sun and moon in Libra will oppose Neptune retrograde in Pisces and Mercury retrograde in Virgo will also oppose Neptune retrograde. All right, so things are going to seem vague, unclear, confusing. So as much as we think we can come up with practical solutions, well thought out solutions, just be mindful of the likelihood of not having everything figured out, okay? And at the same time, be okay with this possibility. It's okay to let things just 
play out without having to control things, but without having to interfere, it's okay to accept that sometimes the answers we are looking for, they're not available to us quite yet. Better to accept this than to live in a state of denial or become delusional. Sure, there is an opportunity to create order and to be discerning during this new moon, but the thing is, is that perhaps taking a moment to step back is also a good idea. And also do keep in mind that so many planets are retrograde. So yeah, things may feel a lot slower than usual. Still perhaps choosing peace and quiet is a good idea rather than listening to the many voices in our minds, all the chitter chatter, of course, with that Mars and Gemini energy joining the party. On that note, it could very well be that the new moon in Libra is showing us how to balance our minds versus our souls. So let's say this new moon is taking place in your 10th house. So looking at you Capricorn, sun, moon and risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious within your career or when it comes to the things that you really want to achieve, especially looking at your public relationships. But you might also consider the balance between your teachings and higher meaning, meaning versus what you're learning and communicating. There's a part of you that wants to revisit how you broadcast and share, but there's another part of you that wants to seek quiet and just allow for things to happen on their own time. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your fifth house. So looking at you, Gemini, sun, moon and risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious when it comes to romance, creativity, um, especially looking at your individuality and play time, look at, looking at your free time. But you might also consider the balance between your home and family life versus your public and career life. There's a part of you that wants to revisit how secure you feel, but there's another part of you that wants to allow for your achievements to happen as they should, you know, without forcing things. And the fifth and final thing you need to know about this new moon in Libra taking place on the 25th of September 2022 is that the sun and moon in Libra will oppose Jupiter retrograde in Aries. So here is an opportunity for us to energetically uplift ourselves. We can think about things through a bigger picture lens. We can expand our worldview or we can believe in our path. We can believe in ourselves or we can motivate ourselves. Even though, even though things seem so much slower. <laughs> Like I said, so many planets are retrograde. September has been quite the challenging month for many of us. Things may not be a go, things might not be going according to plan. Example A of that uh, sentence. And it's also not long until Mars joins the party as well. But I will say this, a good few planets, they station direct in October, so great. But still, during this new moon, um, what if we took time to reflect on our higher meaning and our beliefs? Perhaps having faith is important, or maybe there are some things we can revisit regarding our leadership, regarding self-assertion, regarding our identity. Or it could be that there's a greater idea just beyond the horizon waiting for us to explore. And so quite possibly the intentions we set during this new moon are tied to our future aspirations and goals. There's a part of us that wants to consider the other, but there's another part of us that wants to consider ourselves. Putting ourselves first is connected to something bigger, greater, and more expansive. So let's say this new moon is taking place in your first house. So looking at you Libra, sun, moon and risings, perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious when it comes to your identity, when it comes to your life path, especially looking at the relationship you have with yourself. But you might also consider your future goals and aspirations, 
within your relationships, such as your partner or your close friends and so on. Maybe these people can encourage you to think about the bigger picture and you feel uplifted by them. Or let's say this new moon is taking place in your ninth house, so looking at you Aquarius, sun, moon and risings. Perhaps during this new moon, you reflect on what is fair and harmonious when it comes to publishing, further training, and even looking at how you broadcast your knowledge with the world, especially looking at your beliefs and teachings, but you also might consider your future goals and aspirations within your daily interactions and conversations. I know for myself as an Aquarius, I want to get better at starting conversations with others. I want to improve my communicative skills in just everyday life. So perhaps during this new moon, I can set those intentions. Maybe you can relate in some way. Still, it could be that others can inspire you or uplift you in some way. They can help you see the bigger picture. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video talking about the five things you need to know about this new moon in Libra taking place on the 25th of September 2022. I do hope that you find this video to be helpful today and if you want to provide some type of feedback, that would be much, much appreciated. Just yet, yeah, let me know your thoughts and your opinions. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also give this video a like if you did like it today. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye. Happy new moon.